Blessed be the Lord. I'd like to greet everyone, the peace of the Lord. And also, the ones who are watching us in the same way, peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite those who can. I'm going to read the word of the Lord. The first book of Samuel. First Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. 17. We're going to read only a couple of verses. From we're going to start at verse 17. I'm going to read just a couple of verses. First Samuel 17, chapter 17. You're going to start on verse 17. Actually, from 16, thus says the word of the Lord, 16. And the Philistine drew near and presented himself four days, morning and evening. Then Jesse said to, to his son David, Take now for your brother an ephah of the dried grain and these ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp and carry these ten cheeses to the captain of their thousand and see how your brothers fare and bring back new news of them. No, no, verse 20, it says, So David rose early in the morning, left this, the sheep with uh, with a keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle. And let's only there, Lord, we already praise you for the for the praises, for the thankfulness in our hearts. We sang that you are coming and your son is coming. We praise the Lord for this privilege. And now we plead that your word may come towards each one and that it may speak also with our hearts in a special way, completely in the blessing that you have already scheduled for each one of us. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, we read the text that precedes one of the great victories, maybe the greatest victory of the Israeli people. Many or maybe all of us have been already familiarized with this story. It is when David goes to the battle and defeats the giant Goliath. At this moment here, it speaks of when Goliath was challenging the people. The people in the valley in place Israel, the other the Philistine, and there, before the battle, the Bible says that Goliath, for two periods and during the day, he would challenge the people. And Israel, in a mix of outrage, because after all, Goliath, he was challenging not only the people, but he was also challenging the people of Israel, of God of Israel. And the people, in spite of being outraged with that situation, there was a great fear in Israel. Nobody would dare to have the battle, not even the king. Why is that? Because they knew that surely they would die. Looking through human eyes, Goliath, a giant man, a warrior by profession. And wh how can and why do we read this text? The Lord has shown tonight that there was a great operation of angels tonight here. And those angels, they were bringing food. But as they inspected each one of us, it was they realized that the hands of many were not prepared 
to receive the food. It was either a nail that was broken or a long nail or dirty hands, dry hands. And my brethren, the people here, and we're going to back to the spiritual gift later on, the people here, they were worried. But the father of David said, said the following, David, come here. He had, David had three brothers who had gone to the battle. David was not old enough to go to the battle, to the battle, but his father Jesse said, David, come here, take this, the food, and tomorrow morning you get out and go to visit your, your brothers. See how they are faring in the battle. See how the people is. And David says, here I am. And we analyze this apply to our lives and already remembering the, the spiritual gift. There was a moment, my brethren, in eternity, and in spite of the Bible not speaking about this, what the Lord the Father called the Son, God called Jesus and said the following, Son, you're going to have to go down there. You're going to have to go towards the ones who are there because they need a blessing. And Jesus, at the height of his glory, Jesus says, here I am. Bless be the Lord for this. He didn't have to. David was not old enough to fight. He could have simply said, Father, that's not something I want to do. And Jesus didn't need to come. But Jesus made the smallest made himself as the smallest one and Jesus came towards man to towards you and I and it is interesting that David gets out early in the morning so in other words the beginning of the day ever since Adam sinned at the beginning of humanity Jesus he was already scheduled to come towards you and I from the beginning. Jesus already knew that he had to go and meet with his servants. I need to, to meet with my, my sister. And the question of Jesus is the following, how are you? And Jesus doesn't come with empty-handed. He brings food. The Lord has shown the hands, the damaged hands, either long nails or broken nails or missing nails or hurt, dirty. Many times, my brethren, God has a blessing. But our preoccupation with the battle, with the trial that we face, we even forget to feed ourselves. In David, when he gets out of the house of the father, the word doesn't say that David looked for his brethren. The Bible says that David goes towards the captain and his brothers. The Bible doesn't say if the brothers were at the beginning of the battle or if they were in the middle in the army or if they're at the end of the army it doesn't say this says that David found them I don't know where each one of you here is in your battle maybe you just enter your battle now maybe you have been in this battle for a while or maybe you are at, at the very end of your battle but Jesus knows exactly where you are Jesus came to meet with us and to bring food to us. And our concern many times prevent us from receiving the food or even receive, sometimes even receive, but we have wounded and dirty wounds, uh, hands. The food does, is not retained, it falls to the ground. But tonight, the Lord wants to feed us, He wants to adjust us so that. Not, and the gift speaks about that spiritual gift so that not only we receive the gift 
and fear of, of, of it, but also that our hands may retain this food because there are a lot of people out there that also need to receive of this same blessing. And the spiritual gift speaks of it. It said that at the end of the service, and we believe in it, that all the hands, they have been adjusted. There was oil that, was, that would fall upon the hands. It would resolve the problem with the dry hands, remove the pain. And I say once again, I don't know where you are in your battle, if it is in the middle or the beginning or the end, the pain that you are feeling. But tonight, the balm of the Lord is being poured out upon the church. The blessing of the Lord is at your disposal. And the food of the Lord, my brethren, is not just any kind of food. There's a text in Revelations that says, I was meditating on it, yeah, actually, it says that I'm at the door and a knock. If someone hears my voice and open, I will enter and I will dine and supper with him and he with me. Having a supper is like a feast. When Jesus wants to bless, he wants to celebrate with you. Our God is a God of feasts. He's is a happy God. The feast, the, the supper is not just one type of food is a plentiful table, my brethren. And then David goes. And tonight, you are in your battle, you are in your trial, fighting to retain what the Lord has for you. The message of the Lord for you tonight is this. David didn't have to fight. The job of David was what? To go there, carry the food, and ask them how they are doing, and then return. But the one who fought was David. Are you in your uh, battle? Know of one thing. The one who fights for you is the Lord. Jesus didn't have to fight. I said in the beginning, and I say it again. Jesus didn't need, but the one who fights for us is our Lord. In this battle, you won't have to battle. You don't have to fight. Stop and stand still. Many times the Lord asks us to move. But sometimes the Lord says, stand still, remain standing. Allow me to operate. Because when God operates, nobody can hinder it. My brethren, the word of the Lord is this. You, with your, with your concerns and me with mine, many times we even lose the focus. Those men, they were so concerned with the battle. They, they had even forgotten of feeding. But no, if you're uh, hungry, you can't fight. And the Lord now renews each one of us because the battle continues. We're going to leave this place. The battle is at home. The battle is at work. When you return to work either tomorrow or Monday, the, battle, the fight continues at school. But at least you will be fed. And you will know. You will live with the assurance that, look, I may have my struggle, but I believe that my Lord will fight for me. In the same way as David did this for his brothers, even though he was rejected by his brothers, Jesus is rejected by many people. Many out there reject Jesus. But Jesus does not reject the ones that, who are his. If Jesus said he's going to fight, he will fight. And if, if he fights, the victor, victory is assured. Now we're going to sing a song. And you in your heart will say, Lord, my trial is so great that I'm unable to retain the food. But at this time, the Holy Spirit will visit, will renew, and we are just so that the blessing may be complete in your life.
of the Jesus. Interesting that the text says that when Jesse calls David, David was taking care of the sheep of the father. And David gets out, but he leaves this sheep with a keeper. And sometimes there, there may be servants that are not going through any trial, but the Holy Spirit will still protect him. Jesus is going to say, Holy Spirit, take care of this one because I'm going towards the one who needs it. And the Lord, the praise says the following, He will be your shepherd. My brethren, the world, the world knows that Psalm 23rd from memory, if sometimes even better than us, but we know that the shepherd, the Bible says, the Lord is our shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, your shepherd. The world just knows the psalm. They can say it even backwards. But our experience is with the shepherd, not with the psalm. Now I invite the church to stand up. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Amen, Lord. Not to praise your name. We're not alone, Lord. And no matter what our trial, you are with us. And we know, Lord, the victory is also ours, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord. We glorify, Lord, because we know this truth. Because we know our shepherd. We glorify, Lord, because we trust in you. You know, Lord, you never let us down, Lord. That's why we praise you, Lord, for this assurance, Lord, that guide us towards eternity, Lord. Blessed and is your name, Lord, and also glorify, Lord, because we know that soon you will return, Lord, to take us out of this battlefield, you, alone, you already have won this battle for us, Lord. We praise you, therefore, in the name of Jesus. Lord, accept your service in your presence. We give you honor, glory, and a praise to you, Lord. Because only you are worthy, Lord. We praise you. You have brought us into your presence. And the blessing of the Lord is once again poured out upon us. Lord, we praise you for this privilege. Lord, we glorify you for so many things that you have done for us, for the battles that they rise up against us, while trials, difficulties, but we remain standing because you have been beside us and many times, Lord, and we are unable to walk. We take us up by our hands, by your arms, Lord. Lord, and we ask, accept this offer. Take us home under your protection, Lord. Give us a night of peace and tomorrow a blessed day in your presence. In the name of Jesus, amen. The church may be seated. If anyone needs an assistance, a prayer, we are here ready to help the brethren. Anything else? Meeting with Group B. After assistance, we're going to have a quick meeting with Group B and the youth soon after. And to all the peace of the Lord.